Welcome back. Recall that the Navier-Stokes equations state that the density times acceleration, or density times the material derivative of velocity, which is density times the partial derivative of velocity plus density times v dot grad v, is equal to minus the pressure gradient plus the viscosity times the Laplacian of velocity plus the body forces rho b. When the Reynolds number is much less than 1, then the viscous forces are much greater than the convective inertial forces, which can therefore be neglected from the Navier-Stokes equations, which leaves us with density times del V del T is equal to minus the pressure gradient plus the viscous forces plus the body forces. This simplification of the Navier-Stokes equations is linear and is applicable to so-called creeping flows. When the Reynolds number is much greater than 1, then we can neglect the viscous forces, and for a so-called inviscid flow, the Navier-Stokes equations become density times acceleration equals minus the pressure gradient plus the body forces, which are frequently written as rho times g, since they are invariably due to gravity. This famous simplification is known as the Euler equation. Now we know that the Laplacian in the viscous forces is equal to div grad v, but it is also easy to show that it is equal to grad div v minus curl curl v. In an incompressible fluid, div v is zero, and curl v is the vorticity vector. So curl v is zero for an irrotational flow. Therefore, for an incompressible irrotational flow, the Navier-Stokes equations reduce to the Euler equation even if the fluid is not inviscid. For a completely static fluid, the velocity and acceleration are both zero, and the Navier-Stokes equations simplify to minus the pressure gradient plus the body forces equals zero. Use this formula to find the hydrostatic pressure P at depth y equals h below the surface. The first equation is minus del P del X plus zero equals zero. The second equation is minus del P del Y plus rho G equals zero. And the third equation is minus del P del Z plus zero equals zero. The first and third equations show us that P is constant in X and Z, and therefore only a function of Y. Integrating the second equation with respect to y, we get that the integral of dp dy with respect to y equals the integral of rho g with respect to y, which therefore gives us that p of y equals rho g y plus a constant of integration. If we define the atmospheric pressure to be zero at the free surface where y equals zero, then c is zero and p equals rho g y. Hence at y equals h, p equals the well-known result rho g h. In a flow, the path line is the path followed by a material particle, and the streamline is the locus of points tangent everywhere to the velocity vector field. If a flow is steady, then the streamlines and path lines coincide. It's useful to use the streamline to define a local coordinate system, where the s-coordinate is tangent to the streamline, the n-coordinate is normal to the streamline, and the x-coordinate is normal to the plane of n and s, in this case, out of the page. Now, the pressure contributes the same components to the stress tensor in any coordinate system, and for an incompressible inviscid fluid, the stress components are only the pressures, so therefore, sigma ss, sigma nn, and sigma xx are all minus p in this new coordinate system. Now, if we assume that the pressure is only a function of s along a streamline, and we consider a volume element of length delta s along the streamline, then the pressure at the front edge, p at s plus delta s over 2, is by Taylor's series, p of s plus del p del s times delta s over 2, truncating higher orders of the Taylor series expansion. And at the back edge is p of s minus delta s over 2, which is p of s minus del p del s times delta s over 2. We can now do a force balance on our volume element, and in the s direction, the sum of the surface and body forces must equal the mass times the acceleration along the s-axis, which gives us that p minus del p del s times delta s over 2, which is the pressure on the back end, times delta n times delta x, which is the area, 
minus P plus del P del S times delta S over 2 times delta N times delta X, which is the force on the front edge, minus the body forces rho times G sine beta times the volume of the element delta S delta N delta X must equal rho times the acceleration AS times the volume delta S delta N delta X. This then simplifies to minus del P del S times the volume delta S delta N delta X minus rho G sine beta times the volume delta S delta N delta X equals rho times AS times the volume delta S delta N delta X. Now if we take the limit as our volume element tends to zero, so delta S delta N and delta X tend to zero, of one over the volume delta S delta N delta X of this equation, then delta S delta N delta X, the volumes, cancel from each term del P del S, rho G sine beta, and rho AS to give us minus del P del S minus rho G sine beta equals rho times AS where the acceleration can be expanded into the sum of the transient acceleration del B S del T plus the three convective acceleration terms. Now from our diagram we see that sine beta is del Z del S and along the streamline the normal components Vn and Vx of the velocity are zero which therefore simplifies our S force balance to del P del S plus rho G del Z del S plus rho del V del S plus Vs del Vs del S is equal to zero. Using exactly the same approach, taking a force balance along the normal N axis, we get that minus del P del N minus rho G del Z del N is equal to rho times A N which is rho times del Vn del T minus Vs squared over R, which comes from the normal acceleration of a particle on a curved trajectory, and where del Vn del T is zero because Vn is zero, giving minus rho Vs squared over R. We're now in a position to derive Bernoulli's equation subject to five key assumptions, namely that the fluid is incompressible, inviscid, the flow is steady along a streamline with constant gravitational forces. Steady flow means that del V del T equals zero, and the Euler equation along the S coordinate becomes del P del S plus rho G del Z del S plus rho V S del V S del S is equal to zero. Now if P, V S and Z are all only functions of S, then we can write that dP equals del P del S D S, D V S equals del V S del S D S, and D Z equals del Z del S D S. Now integrating along a streamline we get the integral of del P del S D S plus the integral of rho g del z del s ds plus the integral of rho b s del b s del s ds is equal to the integral of zero ds, which then becomes the integral of dp plus the integral of rho g dz plus the integral of rho v s dv s is equal to c, which is p plus rho g z plus one half rho v s squared is equal to constant c. And we see because we integrated forces along a distance that what we end up with is a work or energy equation where rho g z is the potential energy, one half rho v s squared is the kinetic energy per unit volume, and minus p is the work done per unit volume by the pressures. So Bernoulli's equation can also be derived from the conservation of energy. Either way, it's a very useful algebraic equation for fluid mechanics, but subject to those five key simplifying assumptions stated at the beginning. So now we can do an example of Bernoulli's equation, which tends to work better for constriction flows than for expansion flows where viscous losses can be significant. So find the inlet pressure P1 so that the outlet velocity is V2 if the outlet pressure P2 is equal to atmospheric pressure. 
So writing Bernoulli's equations at sections 1 and 2, we get that P1 plus rho G Z1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared equals P2 plus rho G Z2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared. And from the continuity equation, we have that the flow at 1, which is the integral of V dot N over dA1, is equal to the integral of V dot N over dA2, which is Q2, which gives us that Q1, which is the mean velocity V1 times the area A1, must equal Q2, which is the mean velocity V2 times the area A2. And therefore, rearranging Bernoulli's equation, we have P1 plus rho over 2 times V2A2 over A1 all squared equals P atmospheric plus rho over 2 times V2 squared. And therefore, P1 equals P atmospheric plus 1 half rho V2 squared times 1 minus A2 squared over A1 squared.